Second quarter final in the Case King Christmas Cup has just started and we have a Terran versus a Zerg starting all the way up to the top right of Foxtrot Labs. Our Terran player, it is 4GG starting in red here. Yesterday he already played the same matchup against a German player against TLO and took him down with a 2-0, especially with a very fast game in game number 2 where he proxy two barracks. Now he's up against a completely different Zerg player though, against a Korean player down to the bottom left of the map. In blue we have Hyun. Also very well versed in this matchup, played against Yoda yesterday as mentioned before, didn't drop a map against him, a sick map one brought him the lead with battle cruisers against I think like 50, 60 infestors at some point, so it was pretty awesome to see that. Now we have those two guys going up against each other, one of them will advance to the semi-final where Sun is already waiting and uh, maybe even watching this game right now. So let's find out if Hyun or Fogi is going to be able to take this first game, casting with me today once again is of course, Todd. Are we gonna see the 4GG build, man? I'm pretty sure we're gonna see it, but how well will Hyun do against it? That's gonna be the, the question that will be answered with that series and that I'm really looking forward to. The one thing that is just so sick about 4GG is also like his, his multitasking and uh, when we have especially drop play coming into action later on in the game. That's one thing that he shares a bit with MMA. If MMA is on his best, him seeing him against Zerg and with 4GG as well, just that constant dropping at several locations at the same time and really putting pressure on a Zerg player, it can be absolutely incredible. I've seen a couple of games where 4GG did that to several Zerg players like Jadon for example and it makes a lot of them just look absolutely helpless um, I mean if you think about Hyun's style like against somebody like 4GG who likes to do those, uh, those attacks with like Banshee and Hellbats it's probably I guess I would say tailored to kind of counter what 4GG likes to do because he likes to get roaches himself so all he needs to do is add a few queens make sure he doesn't take too much damage from the initial attack and then even counter attack himself and win it but we've seen 4GG even when he's about to be attacked by something that's really strong, uh, just having the sick holes. Yesterday against TLO, you know, the, the drop was looking like it could do a lot of damage on Merry Go Round, but then 4GG was just ready and just demolished it. Mm. What we have for, for, for Hyun, by the way, now is of course already a, a bit of an earlier gas that will allow him to go straight into uh, speed in just a few seconds to uh, give his Zerglings an opportunity to just like pressure not only the natural that we see from 4GG but at the same time also defend against the Hellions at least at the beginning of the game. The Queens are being brought into play now as well for him. But for 4GG we have like the expansion started, we have one Overlord just like scouting everything that's going on up here at the top. Saw the factory I believe, no actually uh, moved back before that, only uh, spotted the reactor. In the main base we have second gas already taken by 4GG and down to the bottom of the map that speed upgrade that we've been talking about earlier has by now been started with the reaper just like trying to get a kill or two down there but it's very unlikely that it's gonna get anything yeah there's actually six zerglings that were made that's uh i guess Sion wants to make sure he completely shuts down that reaper i've seen 4g make magic things happen with that one reaper and do a lot of damage and speaking of which <laughs> he's gonna get the kill yeah, the ma magic about this. <laughs> exactly, about this the magic only magic thing that happened here was the Reaper dying. That was well he done by him. He made him disappear, Kaldor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he made him disappear. The only question is, can he make him reappear again? I doubt that a bit. Yeah, no, he's gonna be a alien starting now, and remember what follows this. Four GG goes for Banshees with Cloak a lot of the time. You see, yep. he already has the double gas that he takes early on, and then we see the armor he goes go down a little bit later when uh, he wants to basically have it ready by the time he's across the map with the Hellions, ready to transform them into Hellbats. The thing is that of course that is something that Hyun knows as well and Hyun is already moving in with the speed upgrade now. No mining down at the bottom ramp for 4GG since he knows that he's going to be vulnerable against the Zerglings. We have still the third base taken for Hyun now and also back at home just like supplying the additional overlords, the queens with the injects that is going to just speed up the process with the larva so that he can start to drone up and also get a few more Zerglings in there. The first Banshee is now being built as well as the uh, upgrading cloak and that's kind of the decision that most Terran players really have to make if they want to be aggressive and go into the tech with a double gas or if instead they are just dropping uh, the third co orbital command and uh, for, uh, for GG that choice is a pretty obvious one. Banshee's already on the way and as Todd already said the armory is very likely to be thrown down in just a bit to get access to the Hellbats. For now we have the Baneling that's being built by Hyun and you need something if you are up against a potential Hellbat push at some point. You need either have the, ba the Banelings in there or the Roaches, one of the two Zerg alone just don't cut it in that scenario. 
I like that Sion is already working quite heavily on his crisp spread, but I just don't know that he's going to be able to extend it enough that it will affect the first big fights that will come with a lot of Hellions and uh, Cloak Banshees. Still no Armory, by the way, for 4GG yeah. just yet. The one thing that's of course also important with the creep spread is that it just makes it a bit easier for those queens to protect the three bases. He invested in five queens in total so far. We have one banshee out on the map, a second one is being built. So just keeping up with those banshees is going to be the main objective for him. No spore crawlers yet built by Hyun, so he relies really... That's the armory by the way now on the production tab for 4GG. But Hyun is getting the lair tech and without an armory in the game, he might even just like wait for the overseers. But a spore crawler probably going to be thrown down at that natural at least in just a few seconds. The first queen already about to die, just an inject in the last second, saving her ass, but now queen number one goes down, Banshee's moving in, and still no detection, just now the lair finishing up to give him access to the overseers. Yeah, this is weird. Hyun is not choosing to make any spores because he wants to have more money, but I guess right, instead of doing that, he had more queens, oh, so now he's the just trying to start. keep them alive. Bailings at the top, busting through the supply depots here, going in, 4GG supply blocked, oh, and the surround with the Lings, he didn't even pay attention to that, he was fighting down at the bottom against those hell, against the Zerglings, the Hellions are trying to just like toast the entire mineral line and they'll be able to get that access, but at the top we have of course also that bust against the mineral line of 4GG, all of the SCVs dying, and we have the Bailings moving into the main base, the Hellbats a bit too late, the Marines already down, 4GG is completely supply blocked, he doesn't have anything there, but at the bottom, we still have all of those Hellbats moving into the main base of Yan and trying to do the exact same thing. That Spore Crawler that he's building right now is just way too late. And 28 Zerglings are being built right now. This is just a race between the two of them. The worker supply is nearly identical, 16 to 15 at this point, with the drones trying to escape here. The Banshee at the bottom already with 18 kills up to the top. The Zerglings are taking... Got it. They're taking Jones down all of those SCVs, but the Banshee is still doing damage there. He will defend. Oh, he needs to start some queens to defend against the benches. There is, yeah, two of them back at home. And I the third one at home for 4 GG. What the hell is this game? I could have a draw. I don't think it's going to be a draw. There's no way, in my opinion. Just look at this. The two benches, there's nothing that can contest them. So I he's think for G force now. But I think 4GG has done it. Look at the money that we have for 4GG. He has 1,000 minerals. He can always use the mules that he has. He has double orbital. The Banshees can take down the remaining Zerglings that are on the map. And then he can just like start mining. He has three... He has three Banshees, and he still has the supply to build more units. He just needs to take down those Zerglings and start mining again. Yeah, he should actually... Where's the factory? Oh, it got sniped. The factory got sniped, so he can't even make... He, he, if the factory was still alive now, he would win for sure, because he would just make Hellbats and go across the map and fry some more drones like the last few ones. But, but as it is now, Hyun has survived. Yeah, but Tian has only five harvesters. Do you really think yeah. he can come back? I mean, he has still two bases, but in this main base, look at the main base. The lair is dying now to those banshees. So he has one yeah, last yeah, yeah. base. He's going to lose the spawning pool down at the natural. We have, yes, you're right, two spore crawlers, but I highly doubt that he's going to be able to just, like, get his, his income up by the time that 4GG will have an army ready because 4GG yeah, is right. just building more banshees and he has mules. You're right. Tian is probably screwed because... He basically can do nothing right now other than some zerglings or drones and okay supposedly he wasn't gonna reach that mineral line that easily but now 4G is just gonna defend here in a second against the links and those are the last fighting units of Yon that can really do anything yeah. across the map. Where is he getting an eBay? Is he scared of like some kind of one base Muda that could come in the I guess in 10 minutes from now? Well, maybe. I mean, he only saw the lair tech, you know. Maybe he's thinking, I have so many banshees right now, and yeah, I know that, that I can do true. damage with that. But if he hit a spa, uh, uh, sorry, a spire somewhere on the map and gets like one or two meter lists, I have nothing to defend against air. So better save than sorry and build one. I guess that's the only thing that makes sense. You know, th this is why Hyun wasn't making spores at first against the banshees. He knew that he was going to go for this counter attack. He was going to hide a lot of zerglings across the map, and he knew he did his homework. He knew when 4G was going to attack and when the counter-attack would happen, so he went for it, but back at home he just didn't have enough. Like, drones and zerglings were, f were fighting hellbats, and GG. Yeah, 4 GG. Too solid. 4 GG takes the game. A bit of a crazy match that we had there. Jan going for the immense pressure with Lings and Bane Lings. 4 GG having just those Banshees in the air and the Hellbats back down to the bottom. And in the end, that race is won by 4 GG. He takes game number one in the best of three series, takes the lead in this best of three. And let's find out if Jan has another plan for map number two and is able to come back into the series or if we are going to see 4 GG advance again over just another Zerg player with a 2-0.
Game number two on Merry Go Round in our Terran vs. Zerg with 4GG spawning to the top right of the three player map. And the Terran player in the 1 0 lead against Hyun, who starts up to the top left as the blue Zerg player. Pretty epic game number one that we had there with both of them just like going full aggression and trying just to eliminate the opponent's structures and of course also their worker line, the income, um, first. For 4GG that worked actually very very well, especially with him having the air superiority with a lot of Banshees and Hyun not having anything that could deal with that. Now in the second game, the Zerg player is of course going to try to tie the series up and win two games in a row now to uh, force 4GG into submission. Let's find out if that's going to happen. I'm Kaldo, with me is Todd and we're going to find out now if Hyun can come back into this series. I'm waiting for you to say something. Okay. I wasn't <laughs> sure if you had... I was waiting for you to start the recording, but I guess you already started it. Yeah, I did. That was the intro. Okay. Um, yeah, no. I, I like the attempt here by Hyun. It's just, again, the defense that wasn't good enough. And he, I don't think he's likely to try the same thing, but there is always that chance of him thinking, basically, like, I tried it, but I failed the defense. If this time I do the same thing and, and I just execute it better, it will work. He could maybe try something like that. The thing is, if you're 4GG, you now know about this one timing that was hit. Against which he could play completely differently. Like, say, if he had played defensively with the Hellions that he had against just few full Zergling and Banelings, he would crush that one timing mm -hmm. that Yuan went for. Yuan was entirely relying on the effect of surprise and the fact that 4GG was going to be across the map, so... Yeah. I found that star pretty funny though, by the way. Uh, I started with a pause and I'm like, I remember what you said yesterday about just like the timings with introductions and then the other one starting to like get into the flow. And I was like, okay, I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to wait for him. And then after like a few seconds, I was like, okay, it's getting awkward right now. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting too, man. You, I know, you were excited and paying attention to the builds. I know. But yeah, <laughs> it, it was funny. Like, I like that. Okay, so we have for now, as you just like mentioned, we have both of them uh, with the opportunity to also go for a couple of mind games here right now, we're considering how aggressive they were in the first game, and they could change things up here if they wanted to. 4GG always having the option of like going for a safer path. And uh, I was actually uh, even a bit surprised that in the last game, he was so focused on his attack that he didn't even defend with the Hellions that he had back at home. They were surrounded in just a second. And yeah. I feel like especially the uh, what he could maybe protect, uh, have protected a bit better was the, uh, the ramp because he had a few more Hellions coming in, but it was also, if I'm not mistaken, just like that time frame that he had between uh, how, finishing how the armory mean? and getting the uh, Hellbats in there. How do you mean he could have protected the ramp better? Well, he has. He had like at the top of the ramp, he had like one or two Hellions, and uh, when uh, Hyun was trying to bust through, he lost those immediately because they were like too close. And I think it was just like around that time when the armory also finished, so he was trying to get them into Hellbats, but he didn't have the time. If he would have moved them back a little bit and tried to control the choke point with the Hellbats, then I think he could have killed a bit more and uh, be uh, like have a lot more stuff back at home and not lose so much. I mean, it worked out for him in the end. Just on a side note. Um. Yeah, the, those two circling sneaking across the map are going to be a little bit annoying here. Get a snipe on the SCV, that's always nice for Hyun being able to delay that CC just a little bit. We should be seeing uh, the second gas starts here very soon, just right after the starport. And then from there we all know what happens with the uh, 4GG going for the Armory and all that. In this game Hyun opened gasless for a little bit, he went in up to 4 Queens, the fourth one is about to come out. So now he's going to drop down double gas. And Kaldor, I'm starting to think there is a good chance we might see the Roach Hydralisk style on this map. The one thing that, that could definitely be the case, the one thing that I want to point out is that we have just now the second gas taken again for 4DG. So once again, him with the tech, we've talked about the style that he has, where he is aggressive, where he goes into Banshees, into Hellbats, but also the choice that you have on this map is to... Uh, Again, drop down that third CC and just try to go for the economy. And actually, Hyun already starting with the Roach Warren here. And if you go for this map, this map is actually like a map where Hyun in the past has done a lot of Roach and Baneling attacks as well. But as you pointed out, very strong these days is also the attack later on then with Roach and Hydra, which is on a map with such a short pushing distance, always an option. And then it all comes down to whether 4GG sees that coming or not. But Hyun is already working up at the front with a double queen block and double evolution chamber. So that could definitely be a pretty nice push with speed roaches and uh, having a bit of roach support. Hyun just loves to be aggressive and that is right down his alley. Yeah, it's time for your favorite unit to make its first appearance in this game, Kaldor. The drone? 
The roaches, son. <laughs> <laughs> I actually hate roaches. I love mutilisks. Liar. <laughs> Wow, Todd, like, you're, you're just saying, like, we are all the same. That is so <laughs> racist of you. All Zergs are the same. That's... I can't believe it. Okay, Cloak started... Uh, that that initial attack, I think, I, what I really like, wh wh what 4G does with it, is that he never really overcommits. I've oh. never seen him go for that Talking attack. Talking about commitment, sorry to cut you off there, but in the main base, we have that drop going straight against those queens. Taking the yeah. first down nearly, but the the quick... Um, transfuse that we had saving her for now, but That's of course, the attack I was talking about Galdor. Like okay, with this sorry. one, I feel like <laughs> he never overcommits, like literally, like attacking to roaches and queens and lose all of his marines, his medivacs, and his hellions. Like he makes sure that he gets a good amount of damage if he, if he is to lose everything that he has. And right now, it's proving true once again. He's already killed 10 drones. Yeah, with the Hellions that we saw down at the Natural, where he moved in and took them out. He has still had two of them there, so the distraction in the main base with the drop play did quite a lot there. Pushed all the units up to the top, and 4GG doing a lot of damage down here. In total, he killed 17 Harvesters, the last two remaining Hellions definitely doing some work here. Hyun, now in regards to the drone count, still at 43 versus 35 SCVs. The Mules, of course, being a major asset to 4GG now in this situation. But the Banshee is starting to make its way in there, and we have that Medivac still alive and dropping once again, but there's quite a few Rogers and Queens to start the defense. No, still no spore though. I guess he's waiting for an Overseer maybe. He's making one on the right hand side of his main base here, Hyun. But behind this will come the deadly attack with a lot of uh, Hellbats and Banshee. But I guess since we have as many Rogers as we do here from Hyun, it doesn't look nearly as scary as it would usually. So 4GG, probably realizing that, starts his attack upgrades. He starts at 30 CC and he's maybe gonna sit back here for a little bit. Yeah, but that Banshee is still doing work. He has 8 kills on those drones already. He gets another 2. That's 10 kills on the Banshee alone. In total, that makes for a kill count of 27 Harvesters. And actually, at this point, the SCV count is higher than the drone count, at least for a few seconds until the next round of drones comes in. But that slows down everything that Jan was trying to do here. We have him yeah. with the third base now, but his tech, the Spire, he will not have nearly enough minerals to really get everything out on the map that he wanted to have at this point in time. And, I mean, Hyun, I'm a little bit surprised by his decision here. He made a few roaches. He didn't get speed. Those roaches are just to defend the initial Hellbats that he could have to face. And behind this, it looks like he wants to go into a Zergling Muda style. He doesn't have a Baning Nest yet, but he's getting Zergling upgrades, so I fully expect a Baning Nest to go down later. The thing is, He's gonna be playing against Mech. So I really... Oh, he just cancelled! He just cancelled the plus one melee that he had started and that was like... Already uh, started for quite a few seconds and instead he starts the missile attack. So I guess he realized that Zergling style wouldn't be smart. He scouted with the Overseer, he saw the factories, he's like, Oh god, it's Mech, I cannot play with Zergling. Uh, drop in the main base now, once again disrupting the mining there. Not taking down anything, so Hyun reacted quite well there. Was able to snipe not only the medevac but also the two, uh, the two albats. The problem that he really has is that there are three banshees still aiming for that third base. The mutilists, well, as soon as they are going to be there, will be able to shut that down. But Hyun is facing quite a lot of trouble here. We have 4GG with additional bases building. He will have four command centers in just a few seconds. Already pressuring the base down here at the bottom. He could fight the queens if he wanted to. Well, now there's a third one coming in, so that makes it a bit more dangerous. But still, like, 4GG's position here is extremely nice. Yeah, behind this, I mean, 4GG is ahead in supply now. He's going to start taking a third base. If he doesn't take any damage anytime soon, he's going to be in a great position. I can't believe that a Zerg that's making roaches is behind in supply against somebody that make, that's making Hellbats, Thors, and tanks. Actually, no, I guess no tank yet. He's yeah. just going Thors. He killed and a couple of Vikings usually to like uh, just uh, come with the Thors and zone out the Mutalists. But we lost two of them in the main base already. Ooh, Hyun trying to go for some aggression and some harass. But he's clustering up his Mutalists too much and a lot of the Thor shots already hit home. Oh, and the Benches? The Vikings moving in to take them down as well. Banshee's down at the bottom. Actually about to snipe the Roach Warren and deny the speed upgrade. Transfuse! Oh my god. Wow. Hyun does not pay attention for one sec. And miss the transfuse. 4 is like, you know what? Your mutas are pathetic. I don't even need to get turrets. He cancels them. And he's gonna have so much army to work with. He's gonna go for the push of death anytime that he wants. Why is he making so many CCs? He doesn't even need to do that. He can literally just make units and go for the kill. 
Well, right now we have another Mutalus going down in the middle. We have the attempt to just go into the infestation pit. Maybe he is trying to get a few swarm hosts out there, but I think that timing has passed already. Roach Warren is being thrown down again. But at this point, Jan can't really build anything. The only option that he yeah. has is use that Spire. And what is he going to do? Like Just like use the 2,000 minerals and the 1,000 gas for Mutalus? That's not going to happen against Vikings and Thors. Yeah, so it's really, it's really it's nice tricky. that Jan finally killed the three Banshees, but in the big picture... In the grand scheme of things, it doesn't change that much. And I'm still curious to see what he's going to do with the infestation pit right now. If he really wants to get a few swarm hosts out there, he started the upgrade, but he's not getting any units. He has a ton of minerals and also quite some gas right now. So I feel like at some point he's going to need units here. Your GG is still taking his sweet time to get ready. And with all the bases that he has and those orbitals, look at the mules that he just dropped at that third base. Like his income is yeah. just insane at this point. And Hyun forgot to restart uh, speed for roaches. Ideally, I think he would like to get a bunch of swarmos and then tech into vipers and maybe hope that 4GG somehow attacks and loses his entire army. But I mean, this army of 4GG, as soon as he has plus two attack upgrades, I think he's just going to want to attack and freaking demolish Hyun. The one thing that... 4GG doesn't have though a lot of upgrades. He only has the plus one attack upgrade. He's about to finish the second one, but Hyun is getting his upgrades out there. He's already on the second armor upgrade, about to finish plus two attack. He has the first attack upgrade for his fl uh, flyers as well. He's going just in with a few mutalisks now. Sees the third then as well, and he expanded. He expanded, taking, taking a fourth, taking a fifth base. 4GG is adding three additional command centers at the same time, is also starting to use a few siege tanks. But we have a couple of swarm hosts out on the map now, 10 in total. So Hyun, after all the trouble that he had in the early game with him losing 29 harvesters and being pressured by 4GG, is finally starting to stabilize a bit. I'm surprised that 4GG has played so thirdly. I really feel like if he had gone for a timing, he would have been able to close it out. He has 124 army supply against 88, Kaldor. Yeah, and he's starting... That's that's a bunch of mutas that's gonna do nothing to this army. He's starting to move out right now, and that's a lot of hell that's also Thor's with this. Oh, the mutalists really need to be careful there. He's getting more mutalists as we speak, and the swarm hosts are now in position. Maybe he can just like hold 4GG at bay for a long time so that he can get more units out. He's building four more swarm hosts, and 4GG is really reluctant to attack here. I completely agree with you. I thought he would have been way more aggressive with this, considering how many harvesters he killed in the early game. Did we go into a split map on him? Well, we actually might. I mean, just look how uh, Jan is currently like, trying to control the map. He loses a few roaches, running past his opponent's mech army, putting pressure on that third base. But that buys him time, and he can't really use those roaches at this point anyways, especially without even having the speed upgrade for them. Yeah, speedless roaches are very sad always, but... Hyun needs to be careful not to get caught here in the middle of the map. He might lose one or two uh, swarmos. He's gonna lose one here. But 4 is pressing forward. Hyun needs to reach a higher Swamos count here to be able to defend comfortably and ideally we would like to get Vipers as well for some abducts, for some blinding clouds on top of this army as well. Oh, two of the swarm hosts being very aggressive there, just walking into the mech army, but somehow they even survive. The locusts are there, and the locusts are actually starting to do work, and just look at how much we have yeah. for Hyun now. He's at 192 supply. We are really going into a game where Hyun is able to meet 4GG on eye level, which is quite surprising considering his start into the game. So Hyun has done it, he's back into business, and 4GG is still on three bases, whereas Hyun is currently on five. Yeah, Hyun even with the slowing run by on the third base, <laughs> doing some damage here and there. Gonna go for some magic box on top of the stores. It's really weird, Hyun's composition, going for the Swamus makes sense, but the unit that he chose to help protect them and deal with the, I guess, Banshee and Vikings, is the Mudas, which he can't fly in there because there is Thors. Still, Hyun's doing, uh, he's doing a good job of staying alive, I guess, in this game, where he really shouldn't have been. The one thing that he can do with the Mutalisks, though, is just like, scout the map, you know, just like go from base to base, see if 4GG is trying to set up a fourth base, pressuring a few units, maybe go into a mineral line and kill a couple. I'm not quite sure if the mutilists are really designed to uh, keep those swarm hosts safe. He always moved away from his opponent. He never really started to take a fight on the map, but just like dropped a few locusts and moved back again. He has those two swarm hosts that are really suicidal, like those two guys, are, and one of them finally succeeded and died. The other one moved back just in the last second. But yeah, the Mutalists are still trying to pressure, I feel, the Banshees. As you said, he cannot move in and face his, this army like head-to-head -head with only having uh, Mutas there, not with yeah. this many Thors. 
the, the Muralists are just here to basically go for a counter-attack if they can, pick off anything oh. out of position and prevent the Banshees from flying above those Swamos and kill them. But right now they are on the counter-attack and they, they are trying to get a CC. Yeah, they might actually get that. The Thors are starting to get in position, but that CC is a bit too slow. If he doesn't drop a mule, he won't be able to save that. The command center goes down. One less CC for 4GG. The Terran player is still ahead in the best of three series, but in this game, he's actually starting to fall behind. He has so many command center, but he's not taking new bases. He's still on three bases. He just tried to take that fourth that was denied. And now all of a sudden, we have a Hyun on five bases. 4GG. He's in dire need of doing some damage right now. He's adding on two more factories. He's gonna go up to, I think it's nine, which he will be nice. But I mean, he's not really hurting uh, Hyun's economy right now, which I mean, ideally you would like to be doing that. Yeah, uh, the big problem that we already ha also have for 4GG is, and I think the reason why he doesn't really take those additional bases is just that he's so slow with his mech army that he knows that this big Mutalisk flock is always going to be able to walk past him. Look at how much damage that does though. 24 Mutalisk and once they get in range of the Thors, they immediately drop in HP and a lot of them about to die. I think he should really get some upgrades for them, armor upgrades that is, if he wants to play with such a high number of Mutalisks. He's getting more and more Mutas. It feels like Hyun... He wants to be able to hold on the ground with the Swamos that he has, which I think, I do think he should add a few more if he wants to make sure he doesn't die. And he wants to have that mobility, you know, that capacity to go across the map, sniper command center like he's doing now. Wow. And uh, those mules. Yeah, they 10 the mules. They are, they are having the saddest Christmas right now. <laughs> yeah, they didn't get any presents at all. They actually got their presents taken away. They start mining and go long distance mining, but those 10 mules definitely didn't help him. So that was a really big win for Hyun there. Not only on the taking down side. the command center, but also doing this. There was a Hellion attack on the left hand side. The drones were burrowed, but 4GG scanned nicely. So he was able to kill a few more. Like the drone counts. He, skip, he skipped it very low. With 48 to 48 right now. The thing is, Hyun has been so cost effective with the Swamos that he made. He's about 4,000 resources ahead right now in terms of units lost, which in split map situation is a very important stat. So. Hyun has done, has done the work to really bring himself back into the game and he's starting to have a really, really scary mute account. 30 Kaldor with three more on the way. I cannot understand why he never got a single armor upgrade considering how many mutilists he has there. He gets the plus three attack upgrade now and adds the second Spire. I'm not quite sure why he needs that second Spire to be honest. We have him already with the third attack upgrade started so that Spire will just start the first armor upgrade a tiny bit earlier. I don't really think it's needed. Unless he wants to go for Brute Lords, then yeah. it's going to help him to get the armor upgrade at the same time that he upgrades one of the spires into a greater spire. I think going for Brute Lords would be really smart here because for GG, he doesn't have like a massive economy. He's struggling to remax. He yeah. just dropped like 20 mules on his new base, I guess, but it's just like the one base that's the, that's the only one that's healthy in terms of minerals. And going into something like Viking's Raven is going to be super hard, maybe even also impossible for 4G. So if if Yon was to get something like 10 brood loss against Thors, man, those guys, they get stuck and they're pretty stupid against broodlings. You know, the entire time, Hyun is still at 55 harvesters. He never really went into that overdrawn mode. You were talking about that earlier, but that he's really low in the harvester count. That allows him to just like face this army. Usually we have a scenario where even though they are nearly on the same amount of overall supply, the Terran player has the bigger army just because the Zerg has so many harvesters. Hyun doesn't have that. That also means he doesn't have this massive mineral bank that we see so many uh, Zergs have. But it allows him to really just have a lot of units out on the map and threaten 4GG wherever he is. That Thor count, by the way, is is crazy. 80, yeah. 19 Thors at this point. And three of them just died too, picked off by the Mutas. Hyun is just looking for a unit out of position here and there. He might actually go start going for those buildings here in the middle of the map. If he meets that one Thor, sniping it would be nice. Plus three is about to finish for Mutas and Hyun is still adding more Mutas. On the ground he's doing okay with the Swamos. He needs armor upgrade. He, need, he adds 11 Mutalisks. He needs those armor upgrades, like seriously, there it goes, finally, number one has been started, he has the double spire now, let's see if he upgrades them into greater spire as well, we have a Hellion run by towards one of the bases down at the bottom of the map, but 4GG won't be able to do too much damage with that, the Mutalists are still roaming the map, but oh boy, flying straight into 5-6 Thors, that took a lot of Mutalists out of this crowd. I wonder if, uh, I don't think, yeah, I guess not, Ultralist Cavern will be too useful because he doesn't have the upgrades, like he has... Oh, actually he does. He has uh, just Carapace level 3, but no melee attacks. Like Ultralisk, 
against a mech like this, if you fight and then you end up like losing your entire army in the turn, as like everything in the red and like, he's lost a lot too, you can remake a lot of ultras to finish the game. But right now, I guess also, the economy of Hyun is not that great. Yeah. So he's still trying to make sure he gets some static defense up. He has enough units to deal with whatever Sforge is throwing at him. Uh, a Thor run by here. I don't think that's going to be able to do too much against Locust plus Mutas. Yeah, it shouldn't do too much, but yeah, you're right, like, he can't switch into Ultralis, like, potentially it could normally, but not in this case. They Mutalis just melt the Thors away, but he lost a lot of those too, but I feel it was definitely worth it. A good trade for Hyun here, he would have loved to have an armor upgrade with this, since it does a lot against Thors. He cannot fight those that are down at the bottom, that's just, like, too much to go in there with only the Mutalis. He needs to make sure that he has at least locals on the ground supporting them. 150 supply for, for GG, and we have Hyun at 200 supply still putting pressure on his opponent and for GG he was looking at such a good spot earlier but now he's just falling farther and farther behind in this game. Hyun really showing some good play against Mech so far in this tournament I mean up against Yoda earlier and now in this game it's pretty impressive man. Yeah, especially against Terran, like, he seems to be very strong. And currently 4GG is just building a ton of turrets down at this base to make sure that it survives this time. I'm curious to see what Hyun's next move is. He has that second and that first armor upgrade. He didn't start the second one yet. And the armor upgrades are amazing against Thor's because Thor's shoot four rockets against Mutalis against air units so that armor upgrade applies four times against those attacks. It's amazing against Thor's and he's definitely going to get the second one when he realizes that number one is already completed. Uh, the siege is beginning here with uh, Hyun bringing all of his swarms across the map. I don't you think some vipers will help here? I think some Vipers would definitely help him, but I'm not quite sure if he can keep those alive long enough. For now, I feel like he's winning with what he does, so he's gonna just going to stick with it. As long as he keeps those upgrades coming, I think he's in a pretty good spot. Yeah, look at that bottom base. <laughs> I'm a bit surprised that he doesn't even go just stay in the main base with his Mutalisks. There's not a whole lot that 4GG has there to defend. He has all those Thors down at that fourth, gets a fifth now. But if Yun starts sniping a few factories, it's going to be extremely difficult for 4GG to get units back into the game. Ooh, the Salians getting some good shots on the Swarmos here with the scan. I think the risk with that will be that he gets attacked at the same time on top of his units. And then has a really hard time retreating, mm. you know, in a position good enough that he will crush this round army by 4GG. Oh god, he goes straight into these towers, he doesn't even care. Look at the amount of mutas that we have, he doesn't care about the turrets at all. He just moves in and kills them one after another, one shots a turret at a time. Maybe spreading himself out a bit too thin, the Thors are coming back. You know, like talking about the potential of... Oh, he doesn't even kill that Thor. I don't think he sees it. Ah, now he does. Yeah, the thing that what I was just about to say is like... um. Oh god, he moves straight into those and loses them. Like, if he goes in the main base and he gets attacked, I feel he sees it soon enough because of the creep spread that he has. So he should be able to just like see the Thors coming in and then have enough time to retreat. But it's it's definitely tricky. If he makes one misclick and flies into the range of the Thors, he's gonna lose too much. And you could see him just lose about 10 Mutalisks in the last battle just because those Thors got their shot off. And in resources lost, it's still a pretty big gap between the two of them. 34,000 against 24,000 in favor of Hyun, that definitely helps him. The Locusts are now split to the right side to that fifth base of 4GG and to the one that's con to, uh, like constantly contested on the high ground. But the minimap alone, like with that creep spread, is looking insane. They have so few workers, Kaldor, both of them. They're just focusing on the army. And I mean, 4G's uh, Thor count is really nice, but if you think about what this could do against a lot of Swarmos, Really not that much. They're gonna have a hard time getting rid of these yeah. uh, locusts. They they cannot close in on this almost well enough to be able to kill them as well. So yeah, the only thing that I'm a bit, a bit worried about is that Hyun is starting to lose a lot of units and he lost a lot of his swarm hosts as well. Like he just threw three or four of them away without any reason just because the pathing sent them straight into that Thor army. And 4GG is currently cleaning up the map. Hyun is doing the same thing with the Mutalisks though. So we have 28 Mutalisks still there against 23 uh, and together with 23 swarm hosts against 21 Thors. And 4GG doesn't have any SCVs anymore except for 6, but he still has those mules. He doesn't have mining bases any longer, that's his biggest problem. Hyun is the only one of them who really has significant income at this point. Yeah, he has way more income and I mean that makes a big difference here. That means he's gonna be doing a, a much better job of getting a few more units out, possibly maxing out. 4GG has literally almost no income virtually yeah. left. 
He has no so, pieces. Hyun just need to take it slow. Cat keep on catching units in the middle of the map like that one poor Thor. And the, the problem is there's no position for 4GG to expand to. Like yeah. every single every single like mineral line on the map is now either covered in creep or spotted. And just look at the mutals taking down two additional Thors. This Thor count is getting so low as 4GG loses them to mutalist runbys, to uh, locusts. Jan is playing a super patient game and is really starting, well not really starting to turn things around. That game was going in his favor for quite a while now. But 4GG had such a great opportunity in the early game to end it, and he didn't use it, so Hyun used that time and is now just on his way to victory and claiming this map and bringing us into our third game. Uh, going for the add-ons here on these factories, 4G scanning a bunch, trying to see what's up across the map. Uh, yeah, he's sacrificing some Hellbats to try and get some drones, but I mean, even if he gets a lot of drones here, those are expendable. Whereas his Hellbats are not, because yep. there are some of his very few units, fighting units that he has. Oh, the Mutalisk fly into the Thors, and like 10 of them die again. Oh, God. I, I don't think that's going to matter in the grand scheme of things since... Oh, wow, he loses another one. Since Yan still has a lot of minerals. Look at this bank, 1,600 minerals. Gas is getting a bit scarce, for, I guess. But now Yan is up against the Terran player who has just now got access to another base, but the, yeah, well, the Locusts are already there, taking down all of the mules at the top now. Even the base. 4GG doesn't see it for a second and bam, the base is gone. Yeah, that was fast. Yeah. That went down real fast. Yeah, those Locusts, they are not joking around. It's really smart, I guess, to add the mules. Like, it worked out so well for Hyun. Like, if you're 4GG here, your ideal scenario is that if you can get a few benches, you can fly on top of these uh, Swarmos and kill them, but those Mudas really never let that happen this entire game. It's uh, also the Vikings just... could never do a freaking thing uh, as well, and now just pure mass Thor, just it doesn't win against Swarmos. It, it just doesn't. Yeah, it's that mobility that Tian has with the Mutalist as well. He has the Swarm host to be more stationary and really just like meet that slow mech push. And then the Mutalist not only protecting that, but always having the opportunity to go for counter aggression and go to the bases that are on the, uh, on the sides of the map. Just those satellite bases that he can always attack and that are very much exposed. And he did that over and over again. Right now, 4GG is down to 93 overall supply. Tian is at 170, 185 by now. And the Thor count is down to 40. That's all that he has. 15 Mutalisks, 28 Swarm Holds against 14 Thors, and the income <laughs> of 4GG is zero. The income is zero. He doesn't have any income at this point. Yeah, he's trying to retake that right hand side base, knowing that the Swarm Holds are pretty far away from that. But I mean, even with that, his, his income would be minimal, and now the supply is just too much from him. Yeah, and he's just is actually taking sweet time, up. by the way. Yeah, Hyun is. You can tell he wants the tent to suffer. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that might be the case. He droned up heavily. He was already at 55 harvesters. A higher count of drones that he had throughout the entire game. And then he added another 15. So his income is really good now. And the, the locusts obliterate another set of Thors in the middle of the map. 4 GG down to 57 supply. Types GG. Hyun takes the game. Takes game number two in the best of three. Brings us into a third match between the two of them. To determine who is going to be the second player to reach the semi-finals today at the KS King Christmas Cup. Game number three is taking place on Deadwing. To the top left of the map we have Millennium's 4GG who was forced into this third map by his opponent starting to the bottom right. Hyun starting in blue here. Looked actually pretty shaky at the beginning of the match when 4GG was able to take down 28 harvesters on map number two and pressured the Zerg player just over and over again. But then 4GG trying to play it maybe a bit too safe adding command center after command center allowing Hyun to get a pretty decent swarm host count up that helped him to defend against the mech push that we saw from the Terran opponent. So now we have Hyun turning things around, starting a comeback, winning game number two and forcing his opponent into this third game. We're going to find out now who will advance to the semi-final, who's going to face San later on today. Is it going to be Hyun? Is it going to be 4GG? I'm Kaldo and with me is Todd and we're going to bring you this Zerg vs. Terran series. Kaldo, we are cross map. And I'm starting to get a good feeling here for Hyun. I mean... He didn't have a great start in the previous game. If he gets a much better start here, if he has a good defense against 4GG, assuming 4G does again 
the same thing, which right now it looks like it's going to be the case, you know, gas on 12 after the barracks, same opener as before. I think Hyun is going to be in a great position. I mean, even the initial attack where 4GG goes for the medivac drop in the main with the marine and attacks at the natural with the hellions. On this map, you can wall off around your natural. And keep in mind, it's, it's going to take much longer for 4GG to cross the map here than it did uh, on another map, on merry-go-rounds. Yeah, it's certainly true. He will have more time to prepare for whatever is coming here and uh, also probably going to be in the know a bit earlier than that. I feel just like the, these big maps really work in Jan's favor. You could see that in the last game, once that it passed the early stages of the match, Jan gained momentum and he was really able to use that. For 4GG on the other hand, I, I'm not quite sure if that Maxile that we saw him use in the last game with that massive Thor count is really his thing. It seems to be quite slow and Hyun reacting to that with Swarm Horse counteract that, that like in an instant, especially with that mix that we mentioned when he added those additional Mutalisks. Yeah, uh, I don't think that's what he will do every single time, but I guess thinking back on it, even against Yoda, he did something similar where he made the, the Mutalisks and then he had the Swarm Horse on the ground. And on a big map like this, it could work out very well. I really feel though, that if he had added a few Vipers, it would have helped as well. But I guess it worked out so well in the end for him that I'm guessing he knows better than me. The thing is, I, I feel with the Vipers, he was probably a bit afraid that there might be another attempt to get Vikings in the game. Those are usually pretty decent to zone the Vipers out if they are used correctly. And at the beginning, 4GG had those Vikings. But once yeah. Hyun got rid of them, he never started rebuilding them. I'm not quite sure why. Maybe he just like thought that he doesn't need them anymore since the Mutalist count was this high, that he had so many... Thor's already that the Vipers were just like an unnecessary addition to him. But yeah, yeah I feel like that's, that might have been what Hyun was a bit, why Hyun was a bit reluctant to get those Vipers. We, we've seen Hyun actually really skipping on those spores instead uh, yeah. of getting them. He added more Queens, made sure he had the Trend Fuse available, ready to basically save his Queens if they are getting targeted down, which is a little bit weird to me. Like at least one spore, you know, early on would mm. really help against those benches, but they have so much mobility anyway, I guess, and 4G micros them so well that he didn't even want to bother. And rather than getting a quick starport in this game after the factory and then the second gas, 4G goes for the third command center. So I guess he's adjusting to the map here. Yeah, definitely. No, I, I totally agree. And the point that you just raised with the Sporkers is actually like a really good one. And it will work in Hyun's favor in this map now in particular. We've talked about the distance between the two bases already. So if 4GG would have gone into some kind of Banshee play, it would have arrived at a later point in time, which gives Hyun the uh, chance to just get that lair tech out faster to get the Overseer, or at least not faster, but in time to just have some um, some detection when the Banshees arrive because I feel that was one of the biggest points with the anti-air defense that you just couldn't see those Banshees because of the cloak upgrade but as you already pointed out this time 4GG is switching his style up is not adding that second gas for the faster attack but instead just plays the map and the size of the map and gets commands in a number three to uh, get the superior economy and then get into a stronger mid game uh, what's, what's uh... What's really bad for Hyun here is that he's not going to see that third command center, I think. Like, ideally, we like to see it so that he can play a little bit more greedy, but now he's in a situation where the only one overlord that he has close to 4GG's base is around the natural. He hasn't even started the lair, so we're not going to see any overseer anytime soon. And he's not going to be able to identify exactly what he's up against for quite a while. Yeah, for Hyun, it looks though that he also just like tries to uh, just get his take up. With the positions that we have, I don't really think that he expects 4GG to be too aggressive just now. He gets quite a lot of Zerglings though, and with all those Banelings that he's currently building, this looks very much like he's approaching a very different strategy to what we've seen him do in game number one, here, where he was just like trying to apply as much Zergling and Baneling pressure as he could in the early game. And 4GG needs to be careful. He doesn't have a bunker. He has only those Hellions. If those Hellions get caught on the map, then he's in trouble. But he gets now the Blue Flame Hellion upgrade, and that's definitely going to help him against the potential Zergling and Bailing attack. Yeah, definitely. It's going to give him an opportunity also, as soon as that completes, to start uh, lowering the drone count of Fion, which, if he doesn't do that, 
It's going to be very hard for uh, for Borgi to win. It's really hard for anybody against the Zerg player if you let him drone comfortably to win, really. Oh, Hyun actually, when he sees the Reaper moving in, starts the lair attack and cancels it immediately after the Reaper is dead. So he wants to commit to this attack. He gets a lot more Zerglings right now as Fortigy starts with his armory and also with his engineering more. backs. And he definitely wants to finish that game right now with a massive Ling Bailing attack. And 4GG might not be prepared for this. Let me just double check. Yeah, he, he didn't see the lair tech actually. He did not see that attempt by Hyun to fake him out. 20 Banelings are being morphed right now, Kaldor. This is going to be the same scenario uh, than in the first game, yeah. but on a much larger scale here. Like this time, the numbers are actually ridiculous. Well, he gets the first two Hellions. That armory is not done yet. The Zerglings are starting to move in. The Banelings are also on the way up to the top left. Hyun is getting in position here. He's trying to defend still. The Lings are moving in. The armory about to be done, but a lot of those Hellions are already dead. The Banelings just now moving in, busting through that wall, and bam, just like that, 4GG is supply blocked. He still has the Hellions down at the bottom of the map and is trying to use them, but he needs to defend against the Lings up at the top. The Blue Flame Hellion upgrade is already done. He oh. controls the choke point way too well. Finally the bus, but that was so late. Jan lost a lot already. Oh, he messed up big time here at the ramp. He's getting 44 more Zerglings, but he really hasn't killed any SCVs. He's killed just 6 SCVs so far. It could have been in the dozens. He could have been up to 20 plus. Yeah, he takes in down the, most of the Hellions at the bottom now, but you're right. The Harvest account is just better for, for GG and that also, of course, we have to include those mules. The mules will give him such a superior income to Hyun once that he gets them, uh, gets to use them. Yeah, for GG, he hasn't killed any walker yet this game himself, which is definitely weird considering how many Hellions with Blue Flame he made. But Hyun made so many units that he doesn't even need to kill any drones. He's 40 SCVs to 37 drones right now, and those Hellions they're gonna force Hyun to make more and more units, which he doesn't want to be making right now. Hyun wants to build up his economy, so he starts a few drones, he starts a few Zerglings as well, and uh, yeah, Forge is just being annoying, he's already on 3cc, 3 orbitals, and, and just like his position. Hyun is already reacting to what he's seeing here. The Roach Warren is now done, he can start with the Roach just to really push this back. He's about to lose another Queen if Forge G commits, oh god, just barely surviving, uh, well, at least it looked for a second like it would survive. It, uh, the Queen didn't though. Roaches are now starting to be produced. We have Zerglings still moving in. Hyun and 4GG on the same amount of units here in total, but we have that Harvest account just better for the Terran player. And the extra mules are also coming into play here for him once again. So the lair tech has now started for real, but Hyun is so much pressured here. He has three bases, yeah. he can drone up, but tech is a big, big issue. And this is very typical of 4GG as well. Rather than going into mech, which Hyun is going to be fully expecting and has no way to scout, he drops down a lot of barracks and he's going to go into bio, already having double factory up. So he's, he's able to get a lot of Hellions out. Ideally, he's going to want to make them into Hellbats. He can make some Thors, he's going to do just that. This is just great here for 4G. All he needs now is a starport, start getting out some medivacs, and he's going to pump out a lot of units, a lot of bio forces, plus Thors against a Zerg who's just not going to be ready and who's going to be on Roach deck. The one thing, of course, that 4G has to be very careful about is that he is not making the mistake that he made in the last game and uh, just lets Hyun do whatever he wants because Hyun is now just trying to go into full macro mode. He drops a fourth base, he starts to drone up, he goes into lair tech, double evolution chambers being dropped right away. He really just wants to stabilize once again, get a good economy up, playing it maybe a bit greedy. And if 4G gives him the time to do that, then this game could turn again as it did in game number two. But I highly doubt that the Terran player is just going to wait this time. And he's already moving out with the Hellions. Yeah, I think uh, it's going to be hard for Hyun, man. <laughs> in terms of units, uh, he, he has 25 army supply to 65. It's only got a few Roaches and a few Banelings. Those Hellions, they could do quite a bit of damage. But even behind this, the macro of 4GG is going to be ridiculous. 4G even skips. On the starport completely for the longest time. Only now he's yeah. getting it. And, and in he, terms of upgrades, he had he has much early upgrades as well. Like the double evo kicked in very late here for Hyun. Hyun was actually supply blocked for a fair amount of time as well, and not because 4GG really forced it, but because he didn't build the overlords in time. Now he did. And if 4GG would have just committed with the units that he had, he would have done so much damage, but he didn't know that Hyun couldn't build anything anymore. So right now Hyun has those roaches on the production tab again, loses the queen, but can now move in and maybe take a hell in or two. But we have 4GG already moving cross map with an army supply of 102 against 43. 
Yeah, I think the numbers speak for uh, themselves here. Roaches are gonna be caught in the middle of the map. They don't have speed yet. They're gonna die before the fight even begins. And, and the rest? Portage is just gonna steamroll whatever Hyun has here. The rest of the reinforcements now on the way. He tries to add a few banelings to the Roach, makes that he can just like get in and get those uh, damage done. But the base that we have at the fourth, all the drones are already dead, and the third base is very much exposed. Yan is 128 supply against four GGs, 160. And at this point, Yan is just somehow trying to hold here, but with the siege tank, with the Thor, with this many bio units as well, it's just so tricky. Combat shield is done, stim is completed too. In terms of upgrades, we have the first attack upgrade for the Terran player. Here comes Yun trying to go down that ramp. He's just trying to buy time, but it's so tricky for him to withstand this much pressure. Yeah, it's it's pretty cool that 4G doesn't rush in there as well against uh, he doesn't know how many banings for sure, so he's just gonna take his time, siege this base, and Hyun is on the ropes now. Yeah, Hyun is definitely on ropes. He's on the ground, he's currently being kicked in the gut by 4G. The Terran player showing absolutely no mercy here. Started stepping back, taking that third base. Hyun is trying to somehow push him back. Has another base set up to the right side, but he doesn't... He's not in a position where he can saturate that, and his income is currently just plummeting down. He has basically two, two bases that are mining right now, and he's just losing everything here. 4GG with a 50 supply lead already. He's just gonna press forward, and Hyun, there's... Not much he can do here, even without medivac, so I guess the first one got here and has a lot of work to do, but it doesn't matter, there's just too much. Yeah, he stims and stims and stims again, but there are no bailings to capitalize on that fact. A lot of the bio units are down, but 4G doesn't even care. The GG as the Terran player takes game number three, wins the series with a 2-1 and goes straight to the semifinals, where 4GG is now going to face San. We're going to see a Terran versus Protoss in the first semifinal here at the Case King Christmas Cup.